The siege of Osaka. The defenses are stronger than anticipated. A headlong charge would end in slaughter. Look for allies in the surrounding villages. They will know how to exploit the castle's weaknesses. Hi, my name is Trollmaker, playing Age of Empires 3 Complete. This is the Asian Dynasties expansion pack, which is available in complete course. And in this you will get access to the nation of Japan, the nation of China, and the nation of India. These scores are three, well, except for Japan, are colonial, uh, become colonial provinces of European nations. India gets split up into three pieces, maybe four now I think about it. Um, China gets split up into like eight pieces. Uh, and Japan becomes the only country that's unified up with that in quotation marks. This is 1400. Uh, if we had a castle, then they could no longer mistreat us! Uh, around this time, uh, it's constant bloody revolution. Endless constant bloody revolution. The Japanese um, had their first encounters with the European people. And they're very isolationist. They say, no, we do not want to be a part of this. But, I wouldn't felt that way. Some provinces started getting converted to Catholic, or, you know, Christianity. Um, call Catholicism, though. Um, many were, um, many were taking technologies from the Europeans in exchange for treaties. And so, between the years 1400 and, I believe, 1850, Someone can correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe between those two periods of time, there was constant civil war in Japan. You, and there were, there were more uh, rulers in Japan than in all of Europe during this period of time, just because of how many civil wars are taking place. And this is the Civil War of Tokugawa. Uh, this is probably the, the, the first really big one. This is... Help us! Murderous ronin from the east have plagued us for months! But the castle does nothing! This is one where, um... The, the, the first real encounter with Europeans. The first time technology gets used from Europe. And, um... This is the moment we have waited for! Take the walls! And, and yeah, the... Europeans, um... Yeah, we're taking advantage of this. I believe at this point in time is... Our waters require more food than we drop. Spain, Portugal... Build cherry orchards and shrines to fill your stock. We have secured the gates, General. It is time to strike. Spain, Portugal, and the Netherlands, Holland, were the only real countries that were operating in Asia at this time. Uh, the, the British come on much later, so do the French, so do the Those Germans. Osaka outposts lord over our lives. Liberate us, and we simple farmers will help you bring about a bloody harvest. So, you have this kind of like outside force that's trying to uh, install new governments. And you also have competing outside forces creating in competition in Japan. We have breached the outer walls, but to reach the castle we must build a one copy and improve oh, our on the keyboard. And yeah, so for about um you know four hundred ish years after this, there's just a lot of a lot of civil war. And um the political structure goes something like this. The emperor is the ruler of all of Japan, unquestioned god sent down from heaven to rule Japan. The emperor chooses a shogunate. The shogunate is the ruler of, is effectively yeah, basically the ruler of Japan. And he uh, lords over Japan on behalf of the people. And he, um, he becomes chosen based on military strength. And so the seat of power in Japan has shifted quite a bit. For historically, it has been Kyoto. Kyoto is generally considered to be the seat of power. Uh, I believe at this time it might have been in Osaka, where the shogunate was held. And whoever captures the shogunate 
is generally considered to be the the shogun, the the person who's basically you know a prime minister, uh, your senate. <laughs> Your basic um, administrative type peoples. So, in order to fight for the Shogun, generally what has to happen is that you have to uh, have no real uh, enemies. Your enemies have to be in existence. And you should have um, control of the capital. And if you can do those, the Emperor will name you the Shogun of Japan. And so every now and then, a powerful force would show up in a province. Now keep in mind, they all swear fealty to the Emperor, and yet they all go to war with each other, which is kind of an interesting part of Japanese culture. And, uh, yeah. At this point in history, it becomes very common for this odd habit of where people go to war, and all the while, they can maintain friendships afterwards. Very bizarre, at least to me. I'm sure someone from Japan's like, no, oh, God, like, that's not what it's like. It's like more like this and that. Don't care. Um. And yeah, so this game is Tokugawa, and he is um basically like one of the most powerful uh, forces. His family will rule Japan for quite a while and um, yeah it's a pretty epic part of history. Tokugawa of course does win so biggie there but um, <coughs> it, it definitely shapes uh, how Japan will be for the next while. Uh, Japan becomes, like, whereas the rest of Europe, or Asia, becomes kind of splintered and, and severed through war, civil, through not just, not civil, really just civil war, but also war with uh, European nations. Uh, the Japanese don't really work with the European nations, they kind of just war with each other and take various allies. And it, it, it's also kind of a, a look at a modern state, because in a modern state you have um, multiple parties that hate each other. So let's say in, in European politics you have the Democrats and you have the Republicans. Hate each other. They fundamentally disagree with each other. One party believes that, you know, war with Iraq or Afghanistan or Libya is a good thing. The other party believes it's a bad thing. You have this kind of thing. And this allows for the state to say, well, I don't really like you. I, I don't like you, other people. But then after an election takes place, they can go back and say, well, we're allies again. And this is kind of how modern politics works anyway. It's interesting. So Japan was a little bit ahead of the game, but it was a little more primitive than uh, what we call uh, modern uh, republicanism, which is something that other countries just did not really figure out until much later. The Americans had something like it, but not really. Uh, they were probably a little too polarized for that. But in modern politics, we definitely have that. Uh, so, having finished up that little talk, what am I doing? Well, I cannot finish this mission while saving these guys. Absolutely impossible for me. I can't do it. Uh, if I get this, I forfeit this. And, um... I can, you know, do it by just going for this and not this. Then it's harder to finish the game, and I get less objectives and less experience overall. Um... So yeah, I'm not doing that. Um... By doing this approach, it's still pretty hard. Like, I, on hard difficulty, I have not been able to finish, uh, this level without, um, or while going after this. I found it actually impossible. So this all gets destroyed very quickly. Um, I have to get up next level. I want to have a few... Have I got the consulate thing yet? No. Oh, I'm gonna build a consulate anyway. That's bonus experience. 
Um, yeah, yeah, I just haven't been able to do both. It's kind of unfortunate. I'm sure there's someone out there that has done both, and all power to you, but I personally find it to be impossible in the current patching of this game, the current balancing of this game. This campaign is hard enough as ready. It is. It looks really easy right now, because I'm not doing anything really all that hard. Um, but trust me when I say that this is actually really hard. Um, that's mostly because we haven't done anything else. So, I built a castle here. Castles are defensive structures that to build... Strengthen our attack. Use your arrow. castle to build siege weapons, and then take the fight to the enemy's heart. I am going to be build siege weapons. Siege weapons are these flaming arrow things. They're a long range attack to do high amounts of damage. They're not very good against buildings, obviously. And, um, yeah, they do insanely high damage. Yabukasa. Yabukasa. Before I go in, I probably want to have about four artillery units. I probably want to have a um, decent sized army. These buildings here that I'm building are actually really interesting because they also give you resources. That's why they're interesting. And there are dynamos or mobile factories. They can build units anywhere, which is great. So this is a cool part of this expansion. You can choose European ally. Right now I'm choosing Portugal and the Dutch. And you have two benefits here on top, the, the macro benefits, and then you have what you can build. So this one has shipments and boats, this one has economic buildings. Um, this one has the better gold trickle rate, so we're going to go with, you know, gold trickling. That's fantastic to me. Uh, so we need to have some of these. We saw the tea leaves down here. Tea leaves are sold to Europeans for resources. So you can increase your tea leaf rate by slowing down your production. So that's something to consider as kind of a, a macro strategic option. I just built that and it's already used. The more of these you have, more shrines, the more um, resources you get from them. But you can only choose from one from all of them. So if I turn this in wood, they don't turn the wood. Kinda crap. Okay. Get me more gold. Do my gold mines go yet? No. Okay. Uh, every single... No. And yeah, every single one of these um, races is a different one. Uh, races, um, factions that you'd be playing with is a different one, uh, which is pretty cool. And I'm wait on this uh, one right here. That's where it comes from. As you see, I got a fairly nice sized army, but this is just not going to cut it, by the way. By the way. Okay, let's see how big my army is after I spy this pack. Dynamo. Oh god. Hit from two flanks. That is brutal, that is brutal. Oh, I'm gonna, have, I'm gonna lose all my cannons here. Oh my god, let's make a lot of artillery. All because of this weird two-prong attack. Okay, uh, let's get a few more of these guys then. Need a lot more gold. Not to gold. And so, uh, what else about this campaign? Uh, in the other one, units came from structures, and that created um, a new standard of easiness to the game, because then you just destroy all the structures and then you're covered, right? 
Uh, in this game, it doesn't work quite that way. Um, instead, they come from um, random spawning points. A little cheap. And it makes it much, much harder to deal with. So one spawning point, set spawning points right here. I know this one because the units just popped in nowhere. The units will just spawn there and there's really not much you can do about it. Uh, so with this objective, once this tower and this tower are destroyed, uh, all these workers here will transform into uh, units that will be attacked. It's, it's kind of a, a one-off, so you got, kind of got a decent sized army to take advantage of this. Uh, I'm just going to have my dive all the and stuff. Because, yeah, you're going to get a big giant swell of new units show up, which is great. But then... You have to, you know, be able to take advantage of this. So here comes my swell. They all transform into real units. I don't get them. They go automatically. So it's much like um, a mission in which you have to sort of go with the flow. So yeah, you know, I gotta help him out, obviously. Uh, the more I help out, the better it's gonna be for me later on. And there's a lot of quirkiness to this as well. Uh, good example. Sometimes you know, get stuck in a corner here. And we, there'll be uh, siege units, and those siege units will be quite good. And they'll just devastate your army. Absolute devastation. Uh, I mean, it looks strong and good now, but I mean, trust me when I say that's not going to last. The population space, that's not good. I'm at the point now where uh, food is going to be at kind of a prime. And there's also kind of a... I don't want to say a timing thing, but a uh, chance thing. So like, units will just appear from you know, this area here. These are workers, they're a little bit different. That's not a big worry. So here's... One such flaming arrow, and luckily it's not in a weird position. Nothing odd about this. Nothing awkward. Um, I want to destroy the barracks, and I gotta destroy these towers. Even though the primary source is kind of random spawn, like the barracks is still do boost units, and they actually produce them in giant waves too, which is kind of like. New population spice. Oh, it's got a flame thing here. Like this is like a lot of things you gotta watch out for. Like if you get some flame arrow and you don't see it, you can wipe out your entire army with it. Like it, it gets scary fast. Oh, here's a random spawn. Right from this corner here. You know, like there's He's got so much artillery units. Watch my entire army get wiped out right now. Lost my Chichiro. Using all my flame arrows. Gotta get away with what I can, which is nothing at all. Random spawn, total fluke base. Oh well, moving on. Uh, we're in this awkward stage too, where we got switch over to rice patties. Rice patties are unique. They can harvest gold, and they can harvest uh, food, which makes them kind of a mixed bag of tricks. Uh, let's see. Need more wood production. I have a Daimo and the Masumi. This Daimo is a little bit different. He has an aura. The other one did not. 
So yeah. I got a whole army just sitting here. Couldn't use mana attack. It does not. Now, for now I gotta remap throw up and get another attack. And that was my big wave attack. That's the only big wave attack I'm gonna get. And uh, that was unfortunate. Turn you over to gold production. Upgrade food productions. Oh, I build more heart horse artillery. Uh, so this is where it gets kind of tricky because I need to get a massive army to defeat this massive army I just spawned up. I have to sacrifice this position here uh, and hope that this position does decent amounts of damage. Uh, which it did not. Because otherwise I'm mostly screwed. A lot of hoping going on here, not of doing. I did build a barracks, didn't I? Oh, I'll build one now. But I do have a decent sized army here. I got a lot of Yabushis, lots of uh, units that I can use. And so I'm running out of time. And this is, you know, one of the harder campaigns as well. Like this is something fierce to, to actually play. Um, it's really hard stuff. And I, I don't even, can't even think of a single mission that's harder than this. Which is a little bit sad. So they've taken out this, you know, farmer's area here, so that's kind of problematic. And, uh, that's his barracks, that's not mine. Now that we're forced the building, so we might as well get our upgrades, right? Might as well. Alright, army. Move forward. I like to have my dino making hands because it keeps him away from the main field and allows him to uh, get his aura used more effectively. Um, this guy's got to get used over here. The ginger rate is going to get used here. Gotta pick off these cannons. Can't help them escape. I can run now. Very happily. Take that control group 5. I filled up this farm yet? I did. Fill up this farm now. Wait, why do I want to upgrade those? I'm afraid I have a pretty heavy musketeer based army. Must rebuild massive ball is the key to this mission. That's one cool thing about this game, like your allies actually do like expand and get better and like you know all these buildings that they build will produce units and will fight for you so that's kind of cool. Um, but this thing here wasn't a village, this is just like a bonus swell units. Don't bring a talk. This time you just have the artillery so it's not so bad. If the artillery would have been terrible. Of course, these uh, Yabu, Yabu Same are really, really good against the killers. We don't want them to live. Yeah, pretty hard freaking mission. Um, you know, up to this point, including more, like... The whole campaign is actually ridiculously hard. It took me hours upon hours of just wrestling with it to beat it, and... Like, in the end, I think I just pretty much decided, like, I'm gonna do, like, a Zergi strat, and it ended up working. If the Zergi strat didn't work, I probably wouldn't be doing this anymore. 
So I got eight artillery, I got some cavalry, got some Ashugari. Probably need some Yuri archers, but I'll upgrade them. So that we can use the Daimo. Is he still alive? I think I might kill off my Daimo, I guess I did. Shoot. Shoot, 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 shoot. Or in French they would say zut, 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 zut. That's why we're not gathering wood. Nanda? And the good news is I'll probably pick up a Dymo at some point, anyway. All your gold production is mine. Whoa, 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 whoa. The computer is a cheetah. Gonna get this barracks down purely with the artillery, not gonna attack with my own units. Oh my god, it's invading my territories. I don't have any melee units, it's unfortunate. Did I get a hero back? I did, yeah. Hey, freaking cannons he has. And this is what I'm talking about, just awkward positioning. Uh, I right clicked on a unit and I right clicked on the wall. Luckily, move that unit later, but still, that's kind of awkward. Did they go away? I would rather shut down production for longer than the settlers. It takes way too long to make them back. Town center. That mine is why we have so much artillery power here. Uh, yeah, I think it's pretty, pretty easy to say that we're pretty we finished at this point, but uh, you know, I, I know it may look a little easier than it is. Uh, you know, don't think it's an easy mission. Blah blah blah, don't underestimate it. Maybe at least try. Shrines all through Stinkum. I'm not really sure with the shrines. I'm not, I don't think it's worth taking a look around the scene scene. For anything, but I mean it's something that people probably have considered. Alright, let's go for the all-in. It's my favorite part. We go for the all-in. We should right-click and hopefully we have enough here. Population space. This is probably just recording this. Probably my fifth attempt at recording this. So yeah. There will be more Japanese impersonations. Use a voice in future episodes. Thank you for watching.